Welcome back to the absolute most professional StarCraft 2, where I'm excited to introduce the player ranked number one in the world by Dark. It's Dark, the final boss. Up against him, though, where there's darkness, we look to the light. Not the Protoss player we deserve, but the one we need right now. His nemesis, the smiling assassin. Hero. These two have gone back and forth. This may be, actually, I'm pretty certain, this is the only Protoss player in the history of StarCraft II to have a winning record against Dark. Dark had an over 90% win rate against non-hero Protoss in 2023. But Hero got the better of him just over half the time. It was like 52% over almost 200 games last year. But it's a new one. It's 2024. And that might not be the number of likes and subscribes that Jimmy's going to tell me we need. Jimmy! <clears throat> We're trying new things. 1,230 likes on this video, on this cast, and small secret, this is my first cast of 2024. Uh, but thank you for watching. Hopefully, I've made your days and your years a little bit better. And I look forward to a new one. Uh, well, Dark versus Hero. On that unceremonious note. Some things change, but other things, well, are Dark versus Hero. These two facing off in the Korean StarCraft 2 League Finals. Make info in the description. Yes, okay. Uh, if you want to support it. Which is essentially, whereas uh, the ESL Cup is Clem versus Max Packs, or on NA, Clem versus Dark usually. The Korean StarCraft 2 League has featured these two, I think, uh, about as many times in the finals as anyone else. So, starting things... It seems to be a meta. These two, um, they have their own meta. There, there's the Protoss versus Zerg meta. There's the general, like, Zerg and Protoss styles. And then there's Dark versus Hero, which is off, like, quarantined... Uh, where everyone can look at and be somewhat disgusted by while not being able to look away. So, like, the reality television of StarCraft 2 here. As these two are on the same team, they've played each other more than anyone else, they know each other so well, and both of them don't really care if they lose. Obviously, they want to win, but I am quite convinced that neither of them is focused entirely on it, so much as beating their opponent emotionally physically mentally we just slipped physically yeah you know what i wouldn't be surprised if dark came in with a steel chair but he's gonna need more than that to stop these adepts yeah four adept follow-up to the early triple oracle and into the main four zerglings already a lair on the way anything coming out of it is going to be a little slower after the adept slice into the mineral line Wow, six, seven. Good thing they have a the little counter. Oracle trying to come in and get involved as well. Maybe help out against the Zerglings and then realizes that wasn't going to happen. And Dark cleans it up. Hero definitely overstaying his welcome. You know, you just got to... Those in depth, so you got to slap your... Well, guess it's time to go. And then they spend another 25 minutes trying to get out the door Thanksgiving. Or, wait... That that's my name. <clears throat> Nidus. Nidus. Dark says, well, looks like something happened. Time to slap down the Nidus network. And Hero, I don't think is going to be quite ready for it. The uh, triple oracle still slice him by, even if he sees it. And he will see it. Burning through a queen. Brenda, no! Don't look away. I'm oh, gonna get a lot of kills. He sees the Nidus. There's plenty of roaches and legs. Just because you see it doesn't mean you can stop it. Uh, but it certainly helps as the oracles can come back home. The zerglings are already out in front. Uh, Dark doesn't bother with trying to slip it into the main. He's just going to slap it down at the front. And here come the queens. Oh, stasis. The queens already headed out of the nidus. The scream is coming through. Shield, batteries, and cannons. And here we go. The Zergling loaded in first. Whatever goes in first comes out first. All right. Uh, that's just a good rule of life. 
Another knight is at the natural. That's a lot of ravagers and links here. We've arrived! The queens have gotten involved. And the corrosive bile breaking through a stalker at the front. Hero was going for all of the tech here. The oracles are going to be needed, but the queens are providing the empty air. Launches corrosive vials and gets back into the Nidus from inside. He just heads down towards the third. Another Nidus, the queen standing by. And Dark is starting to pick apart the defenses here. The oracles burn through one of the ravagers. Enough energy for maybe one more. The probes are pulled. Shield battery overcharge is already utilized. Another Nidus comes through. And just because Hero saw it coming. Once again, doesn't mean he's going to be able to start. Though Dark not actually attacking the probes. He's focused on a pylon here. A bit of a arguable Miss Micro out of Dark. Not really taking advantage and killing nearly as much of the economy as he could. But he's not done yet. The Queens are holding the door. You shall not pass. And uh, the Ravagers helping to box things in. Blink is not done. Corrosive by a real and present danger. Hero not paying attention. Loses two stalkers. Zerglings get a couple more. And another wave. Gonna be thrown down. The queens are holding back the immortals. Who's the real stronger unit here? Immortals can't heal. Queens can. And the ravagers are breaking through the third. Hero made the mistake with the hubris of all the damage he dealt early. It's followed up by a devastating counterattack by the final boss. But it's not over yet as heroes have been building up a capable army. You go through the... Don't go for the Nidus network. It doesn't work like that. The queens can come back to defend. The immortals trying to break out of their own base, but he sprays a corrosive bile behind the lines. Smartly done by Dark. The oracle's still burning through. Six drones. Dark has the worst economy in all this, but he just has this unit count, and the corrosive bows make everywhere uh, a bit difficult to move. Immortals are blasting through, but the extra armor on those cocoons and the uh, hero getting a little far forward. Spray and pray. Corrosive bile rips through. Knocks down a pylon. The queens are back. Another wave of biles are coming through, but the blink is done. And plus one, one is alongside it. And that means these stalkers are starting to gain a lot of value. Hero held the line long enough. It was a race somewhat, but he pushed it back. And now he just needs to keep the stalkers alive. Corrosive bile. Comes through again, knocks down another. There goes the last immortal. Appears their names were not quite accurate. The 1-1 one -one stalkers are pretty solid here. Shield battery overcharge about 15 seconds out. If he gets another one, he might be able to finally break out after holding the line. Dark is down to 36 drones. And the oracles keep coming in to shave that number down. The cyber core is taken out. No more stalkers, but charge is done. And zealots could be very helpful in finally getting rid of this. He uses the shield battery overcharge as an opportunity to break out. It's still so close here. And Hero, he was pushed back. He was pushed down. But Dark was unable to push him out. And now he's got a strongly upgraded Protoss gateway army working its way across. Even wandering some overlords and not really mistakes he can afford right now. It really looked like Hero might crumble. But... While the cracks showed, he's able to patch him back up. And he holds. The counterattack damage on the oracles was absolutely critical in putting this situation together. If he wasn't able to limit Dark's economy, that three hatchery production in just the mass units would have certainly been a game uh, ending situation. Dark would have been able to put enough units on the field to just outright run him over. But the oracles kept that drone count low enough and the production low enough. How many kills on these oracles? 13 kills, only five there. Their brethren, I think, getting just as many, if not more. Units loss is about even. What a game between these two. First finals I've seen from them in 2024. Game one already starting out. They're just so evenly matched. Darks. Uh, he doesn't care if you see the punch coming. He still goes for it. And Hero barely holds, but with a, a much more micro-oriented force. Not that Ravagers are, are particularly devoid of that. Well, speaking of micro, that's a lot of sentries. Stasis covers the back line. Force fields scattered across. The Ravager Hydra. Hydras are great against this. But the 1-1 one -one upgrades and the blink allows Hero to dictate the pace of the battle. He's able to slice off just smaller groups of units 
and uh, hopefully chew them before he has to digest the corrosive bile. More stalkers being warped in. Hydra's for dark. The economy's below 50 workers apiece. Here comes some more queens. Cross about blunts forward. Huge move. Force field. But dark decides he stands his ground. Here come the oracles. Finally getting knocked down. The drones are pulled off the line. And the queens and hydras. But the stalkers are starting to do a lot of damage here. There's not that many hydras left. There's a stasis on the back line. Juggles back in immortal. Beautiful warp prism micro from Hero so far. He needs to keep it together. 14 drones down. But Hero moves forward. Juggles back the last immortal. Blunks on top of the hydras. And that looks like it's going to be just enough. Melee wait. No, did he go too far? Oh, and uh, four stalkers and an immortal. The barrier is used. Down to three. There's barely any units left. The supply on both sides. But I think we have to ask the question, at what cost? Dark is down to 33 drones. Hero has the economy. Hero has the production. And Hero has enough units to keep the aggression high enough to keep Dark from making his way back into this one. And that means I think Hero will take game number one. What a game. Whew. Hero keeps it together. He maybe got a little greedy, but it paid off in the end. And that means that in this Korean Starcraft... Okay, okay, there's no... Nope. Uh, the shirt needs to remain on, but it, it's this micro is just too hot. <clears throat> We're going to game two. These two are... Hmm. Of course. I don't know why I expected the game to just end. It never just ends. I love how Hero... I don't think it was intentional. Oh my god. Never mind. I don't care about that game. That game's over. Hero looks like he's gonna go for... Well, he's already got the minerals. Okay, game two. We're on Alkyoni. Hero up one to zero. I already have to think. He's preempting dark taking the gold wow and he took the minerals from the center line not from his side so that means he still has a mineral wall to his third here the mind games but i want to talk about that last game <sighs> the the multi-level mind games here okay i'm gonna i'm gonna give myself a minute to talk about that last game and then we're gonna have to talk about here's like proxy stargate mind gameplay here but Getting the double forge, I don't know what he thought Dark would do, but the double forge ended up being both a curse and then a blessing. Because if you don't have the upgrades on the Blink Stalkers, you're just gonna lose. Like Ravager Ling, Stalkers, um, how do you say, uh, suck. So if they suck slightly less, that does a lot of the time make the difference with that incredible micro. But it was the Oracles, it was Dark who has a tendency to maybe lose a bit too much to that early harass. And then, like, he'll take some punches for no reason. He'll just sit there like, all right, you gonna hit me with some adepts, whatever, seven kills on the drones. And then he'll just come in with, like, a flying roundhouse kick of a Nidus and then continue pummeling you. Problem was, hero didn't break. All right, proxy Stargate. And since he didn't mine through either of these mineral walls, even if Dark took a look around, I like how this is a, a double, uh, the double utility of this early probe. So he taking the gold base first has become standard, but it's like a dark standard, which is a entirely different measuring system. But Dark takes the gold base on this map, like uh, probably 50% of the time. Ah, uh, so he both scouts that, and if it's unscouted, he now knows he has a relatively safe and unlikely to be scouted location to do a proxy stargate. So Hero taking both sides of this story and uh, combining them into a nice and relatively original cheese. I love it. <sighs> Good to be back. Now, for those wondering why I say the first cast, so, uh, 
the the matches before this were some of the best of last year. I, I went on vacation. Um, yes, it was it was crazy. It was stressful, not working, but almost as stressful as this oracle coming in. I don't know why I was going into the filler com uh, commentary there. He's just gonna give up the oracle. Five kill. Ow! Ow! Dark knows where that protocol came from. Where was I? Ah, uh, yes. Very stressful to go on vacation, not be able to cast every match as it comes out. Um, you can see some of the pictures from Japan on the community posts. Uh, but, uh, and we'll be adding some more on Discord and all that as well. But I'm looking forward to 2024 a lot. I'm looking forward to Stormgate Zero Space. There are other RTS in the works as well. I know some of you are excited for Tempest Rising. Of course, Beyond All Reason is still going strong. We get the pylon in time. Oh, no. Oh, this game's a bit of a disaster for Hero. Four more kills on the drones. Dark is only at 31 drones, but... He gets the Stargate, and he can deny the third, so... I would say, even though Dark once again took some economic hits... He's gonna bounce back quick. Especially considering how many Zerglings he already has out. Hmm. But yeah, I'm excited. So, I'm gonna take this time as well. And we're gonna start promoting my second channel. Winter Gaming. Yes, it's in the description. Where, uh, that's where I usually stream. Because you can stream on Twitch and YouTube as well. Um, we'll be uploading gameplay and other kind of longer form. I know it's already long form content here, but even longer uh, form content over there. Uh, on top of, of course, I still plan on 80 to 90% StarCraft 2 for the foreseeable future here. So hopefully you enjoy. And if Dark vs. Hero keep playing every week, we could just up that to 100%. Uh, Hero keeps coming out with not enough adepts in trying to jam himself in. And Dark just keeps killing him. Like, he has enough Zerglings to keep doing this. I don't know. Hero, you keep doing the same thing, and the same thing keeps happening. I don't know. It's kind of crazy. Here come some more Zerglings. Who would have thought? Dark of all people. Oh, he warps with those adepts, but that's not a great spot. Zergling gets in. I can't believe those Zerglings. They just keep getting in. That's crazy. Oh, God. Oh, where's my emotional support circling? Really need an emotional support probe. You know, I think Hero kind of deserves this one, though. He just keeps sending out three adepts against 20 links. He's like, this time it'll... This... This is the time. All right, I'm going to micro real hard. No! He has 20 links. You have three adepts. Doesn't matter how much you jam yourself in that corner. It's, it's not going to work out. But we got kind of a similar situation to the last game right now. Uh, the situation being that Dark has knocked Hero down to two bases, or kept him on two bases. But this time, the difference is that Dark has not been... He hasn't had his leg chop, chopped off economically. All right? He hasn't uh, been slowed down very dramatically. He's got a fourth hatchery about to complete Burrow on the way. There's not... There is a Robo. Oh, my God. Plus one melee, but the Archons. Power overwhelming. Adept scouts forward. This is a difficult attack here. How many gates behind it? Eight gates. So full reinforcement. Hero going for it here. And roach speed is not done. Not even that many roaches out on the field, but the queens are ready. The Zerglings doesn't want to commit them all, but gets on top of the Archons. Has to juggle them back. Hero repositioning. Queen's having a tough time. Spore Crawler getting involved. But the Archons are adding a lot of damage. He's going to need to move that prism. He does so. Loses an Archon in the process. But the Zerglings have been whittled down, and the Zealots are charging for. One Archon survives. That Warp Prism is absolutely everything, and Hero... Oh, but the Burrow! Out of nowhere! Into nowhere! He pops back out! Might be able to force the Archon away. The Burrow! What a play by Dark! Definitely seeing a lot more use in this late stage StarCraft 2 as we explore the very bounds of, of everything that each race is capable of. But... Three drone kills. Thing is, though, this re this entire attack was reliant on keeping the momentum. 
and Hero did not do so. He does not have a third. He does not have any reliable way to deal with those burrowed roaches. Even if you have detection, it helps a lot with the repositioning. He doesn't have burrow move, but as you saw there, even that moment that he was able to uh, uh, avoid and then surround the Archon ended up being the decisive moment. Did Hero wall off of the pylon and then destroy it? Well, it's better than not walling off at all. I'm surprised Dark doesn't have any Zerglings burrowed in uh, these locations, but there was a lot going on. Hero will attempt to take a third. And the Archon, yeah, I... Hard pressed, hard pressed here. Medium and hard pressed to see Hero dragging this one back. Very simple um, situation. Dark has more stuff, and more stuff counters less stuff. And there isn't some sort of force multiply. There isn't some sort of massive upgrade advantage. There isn't a bunch of splash damage. There's not a crazy tech switch. It's just Immortals, Archon, some sentries mixed in. Dark is building up towards 200 supply. He's gonna bring a uh, Queen Chauffeur Overlord here. And it looks like Hero's just gonna move out. I think, oh, I thought it would be a Queen Chauffeur. It looks like it's just a Sloverlord drop, but. Here we go. Hero's gonna hit again. He's only at 46 probes. He needs to do deadly damage here. And that is a lot of roaches. Yeah, dodges it, force fields, force fields, but he morphs the Ravagers, which have way more armor, as Dark uses Ravagers as his own force field to counter the force fields. Now, you know, that is a strong Protoss army. Sprays and praise. Hits a few units there, I think including his own. That's still a lot. The sentries don't have that much energy left over. The force fields have been great. He's gonna warp in a few more. He needs to kind of isolate part of this fight, but the War Prism, targeted by the Corrosive Bile, almost taken down. The Queens get another hit, and the Force Fields are good, but he's keeping so many units at bay that by the time they're unlocked, there are so many left. Hero is getting very close. Oh, the War Prism dies! And as so many times we've seen before, with that, so will Hero. He has no lifeline, no path of retreat, and no way to take another game. Dark strikes back in game two. A great series thus far, and only getting greater. I hope. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure that... It... But these two only have two type of games, which are mind-numbingly close to the point you can't even tell who's ahead most of it and then more one-sided than a mobius strip so far we've got more the first than the second but there's almost always at least one game a series that ends up just being a complete and utter build order failure which i'm feeling it here on hard lead all right i have no basis for this but i'm feeling it let's see Uh-huh. All right. Sure, yeah. Yeah, we're going to do a proxy hatch. Now, this is a this is essentially the much more dramatic and flamboyant equivalent of pylon blocking. Dark knows this won't finish. This isn't to make zerglings or spines, though I'm sure he would if he had the opportunity. Um Hero knows that 6 plus a zealot is a little more than needed actually in order to kill the uh, hatch in time, but hes I think he's timing this out with the minerals you need for a nexus. So if you pull that many, you kill it just in time to have exactly as much as you need. There's still a spot of creep here uh, for a couple seconds, but here comes the nexus. And now the drone. I'm gonna get acquainted somewhat. Oh my god. He's doing, he's doing the mineral flirting. Just like all those annoying, Dark's, 
he he will not he doesn't just watch Protoss be annoying and shake his head. He says my turn. <laughs> From the early natural block into denying some mineral mining to just sticking around an uncomfortably long amount of time. Classic. Well, I mean hero, but Well Zelic comes across. Zerglings looking for the surround. Robotics facility. I was just thinking about the overall meta of Protoss versus Zerg. And, but then again, I realize we're watching Dark versus Hero, and we can draw absolutely no conclusions outside of this microcosm and macrocosm of a matchup. So, uh, I'm not going to bother. That's a robo. That's all I got to say about that. Pervert pillar. And, I mean, the drone is still in the main, so it's not like he can deny any scouting. The robo historically has meant a timing attack, because if you don't go for a stargate, you kind of open yourself up to the Zerg doing a lot of shenanigans. It appears the Zerg's gonna do a lot of shenanigans anyways, as it is dark, and he's got 16 Zerglings with speed, and that, that Zealot, is that the right spot? Oh my. He's gonna go for the pre-split, the surrounded he gets. I don't know what he expected to, oh, he's waiting with an Observer. The Adepts are able to shade back. Does he get one of them? No. If he got one, maybe there's an opportunity to break through the Zealot, but he kills the Stalker. The protectors of the Overlord, the Zerglings here. It's a Raptor drop. Oh my. Oh, hero. Oh my god, that's Stalker. And Dark Nose. The, the micro. <laughs> hey, what's that Stalker? He tries to get in. Not quite. A rare but welcome sight. Hero actually walling off successfully. And Dark is supply blocked with the scouting Ovi being taken out. Ah, uh, yes. Of course. Gravitic Drive. Speed, Prism, Ruptor Drops. Okay. Here we go. And the Zerglings. Well, they should be able to kill off. One of the Adepts slips off to the side here, so I think it will escape. Two! Two is a much more dangerous number. And where are the Queens? All right, they chased it down. There's still the Observer in between. Where is that War Prism? Loading up the second Ruptor. The Double Barrel Shotgun Bill. And here we go. It's been quite a while since I've seen someone just... It's a double star. Wow. Okay. Ah. <sighs> well, here we go. All right. The double ruptor. The queen's already in place. Point blank shot. Fires off. And knocks them both out! Double kill! The full queen shot blast. Two kills, and it keeps everything with shields intact. Hero's gonna be happy with that. It looks like... I'm not sure what actually killed some... Some more adept shaded in to try to kill some drones. Oh my god, <laughs> the intimidation move, the disruptors! He's pre-split, just hunts the queen, and down she goes! Brenda will have her... Where's the creep? Karen, where's the creep? You didn't tell me I needed to creep. You said, please creep. You didn't say, please creep now, Brenda. Okay, be clear. Be, be concise. Oh, Karen. Oh my fucking god. <clears throat> Sorry, I uh, blacked out. Oh my, disruptors in the main. Fires off a volley. Oh, but the counterattack. The Zergling's force feel good. I think this will be hell. Six kills, but the problem. A lot of the time. Oh my god, I can't believe Dark is playing into his hands. Dark. Does he know about the Stargates? He doesn't. And the Phoenix is all revealed. Dark has been outplayed mentally and physically. 
The Ruptors drop out. They fire off a shot. Hunt the Queen. Take her out. The Disruptor drop has been a remarkable success. And apparently Dark doesn't even realize that the Observer has been scouting his spire this whole time. The Phoenixes have been revealed. I mean, he's not gonna go mute us. Is this Roach Corruptor? The two-handed fist. Um, you know what? I stand by my statement. Oh no, watch out, watch out, watch out! Un oh, what a save! As the transfuse comes in, in between the disruptor hits and here, oh my god! Not again! The Zerglings are in the main. There is nothing more sad than watching Phoenixes try to pick up Zerglings. Well, the Phoenix. Oh, we select all army back. Here's the disruptor drop. Hero! 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 Sometimes Hero is like the, the most accomplished diamond leaker in all of StarCraft 2. He just select all armied everything including his Ruptor drop back, despite only needing a, a few adepts to clean up the Zerglings. And that may very well have given Dark an opportunity to get right back into this game. Yeah, his economy kind of sucks here. But the anti-air, there's only four star- there's two Void Rays out now, which are quite accomplished. Oh, but he could kill the Nexus? Dark could very well get- he's gonna get the Nexus. Shield battery overcharged, but that's not enough. The Void Race. Well, the Hero has decided we're base trading. Oh my god. Here we go again. Fires off a shot. Tries to get a double. Gets close. Could easily pick up those queens. The Corruptors are coming back home. Still a few Corruptors. These armies are crazy. And here we go. Picks up the queens. Corruptors getting involved. Targets the War Prism. Smart choice. Disruptor wanders in front. Already a lot of damage. The queens help it out. More corrosive bile. Gets a prism. Drones off the line. Fires more. Phoenixes. Down goes another void. And Dark Holtz. You brought the Lord of Chaos into the depths of madness. And now you're the one who's found wanting. Dark. No roach speed. Plus one flyer attack of all things. He will drive the Protoss back. And now Hero scrambling with whatever he has left. Dark could go for Mutus. I think he will. He's already got plus two flyer. He's knocking out these phoenixes. Pale in comparison to the power of the Corruptors. Mutus! Nine on the way, and why not? He just wiped out the anti-air. He could wipe out the source of it. He could just kill the Stargates. And Dark strikes back. Hero had mentally dismantled Dark at the start of this game. And Dark took offense to that. This all turned around because yet, a oh no. Oh, does he get it? But at what cost? Oh my, well, that's a, uh, that was a lot to lose. Over the last four minutes of battle, Hero has destroyed 6k to 5k minerals, and both of them getting about 15, 1600 gas. But the Mutas fly in right as the Nexus finishes, and Dark just claims a victory, just like that. Surprise and goodbye, says Dark. Wow. Hero. Dropping the ball, and more importantly, uh, his zealot off hold position at the natural gate. I can't believe, well, the more things change, the more things stay the same. The amount of times that Hero sets up a beautiful build with great control and incredible preparation is counteracted yet again by the fact that Protoss never inf invented doors. Oh no, that was a painful, exciting, dramatic... I'm going back to painful game to watch. Oh my god. I can't... Ah. Hero just needed to tie a bow on that one. I, I... And instead, he unraveled. I can't. Those Zerglings. The amount of times. These two have such an effect on each other. I mean, other Zergs have that effect on him. 
but I think I've seen a higher percentage of Dark Zerglings get in than Serral's against Hero. As Dark just... He seems to know, like... It was like a Jenga tower of a build there. Dark, but... May, maybe not the best comparison, because... Hero had everything going right. And then Dark just... It all went wrong. One big select all army hockey. Bringing back the phoenixes, the prism, to deal with zerglings. It wasn't to deal with zerglings. It was a panic. And Dark thrives on the panic of his opponents. So that is what truly happened. That is how that game went. It wasn't what unit counters what. It wasn't what timing or what the economies were. It was Dark, just mentally unraveled hero. And by the way, not only that, but he turned it around after, you know... Double the pride, twice the fall. As Hero was clearly uh, outmaneuvering Dark throughout the early game there, so. Take a moment. Really, guys? That's what we're doing? Sure. Back to the Stargate. Zergling's on the way. Just enough gas exactly to get Zergling speed. Dark at zero after it. I want to take this, this generic early game filler time and thank Dave Testa and Chicken Man uh, for putting on the Korean StarCraft 2 League, by the way. I did mention, you can find info in the description, this league put on uh with the patreon of the korean sc2 league just as a tournament especially since the korean sc2 scene um is not the most actively supported uh gsl still going but uh, struggling overall to be honest it is the community tournaments that have always been the lifeblood of sc2 and they are helping out a lot by giving us more opportunity to see the best players and show good games. So if you want to check it out, you'll find that in the description alongside that second channel I was talking about earlier. Adepts, what are you doing out here? Pinned up against these generic crates. Maybe caught between a rock and a hard place. Now that one gets out. Oracle, on the way. And the creep begins. Looks like we have the most passive of early games, even though that still means another Adept will die. Hero not embracing the new pylon positioning we're using. Uh, that players like Raynor and Classic have been, which is putting the pylon like right alongside this first mineral, so that way you have three or four different little choke points. You jam them into that little mineral pocket as well. Uh, and paying for it a bit. The Zerglings, the, Ade the Oracles are shown on the other side, so the Zerglings will come in and try to just get through the Adept. He's got to pull a probe and slap down a battery or something here. The Oracles are on the way back, which is the real win. Any amount of time, those Oracles are not keeping track of what Dark is doing back at home. Well, uh, and now Hero is just afraid of a big um, all-in attack. He's keeping those Oracles back at home. Now, he's got the treacles. Adepts. Enough to protect for here. He's building a, a fourth oracle here. And burning through the queens. He's really been assassinating queens today. Gonna get two more. One badly bruised. Gonna tell all her friends about how painful it is.
Five drones down. Dark committed to a lot of zerglings, and now he's gonna quadruple down with 20-something more. Which isn't exactly how math works, but... The numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you! you got a baneling nest on the way. So it appears that Dark leans so hard into the zerglings, he's reluctant to lean off them. As he knows the economy is, is not doing incredible. He's only had 46 drones. Adding a couple more. He wants a fourth nexus here. But the oracles are going to help keep control of the situation. And right now, these zerglings are going to be hard-pressed to get anything done, even with a baneling nest. The oracles, the zerglings may have wings, but they certainly can't fly. Which means the oracles are able to burn through so many of them. Nice little setup here. These uh, kind of double-pronged, just building a shield battery or a couple cannons together. Uh, not making anything too vulnerable to Banelings, but still being able to funnel some of the Zerglings. I'm crediting Raynor with that. Raynor and Harstam. Actually, the Protoss kind of re-engineering the Protoss defense against massive amount. Oh my god. Oh, wow, that shield battery actually reaches all the way to the very edge there. Banelings, hero! Oh, no! It's a disaster! 18 probes obliterated by Banelings just waddling in. Hero was watching his oracles on the other side, but he didn't have the revelation that he needed in order to defend his third. And down goes an oracle. Not again. Hero. Hero. Oh my god, somebody give him the Heimlich, he's choking. Uh, now, here's the thing. Dark was so far behind economically, he committed so much to those Zerglings, that he needed to do some damage. So it's not like Hero outright loses the game, but this goes from like... Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> this goes from Hero having like a strong um, head start. Maybe not a full-out lead, but... Definitely the initiative to Hero now being one mistake away from uh, potential defeat. As he no longer has the economic advantage, he no longer has the same amount of bases. And, uh, well, Dark just finished a lair, so there's still a decent amount of tech on the field. Especially since without a lair, you can't have Roach Speed. You certainly can't have Vipers, obviously. Uh, there's nothing besides conventional... And mostly unupgraded Zerg here. Uh, Zerglings, at least. A single hero, Colossus. Gonna try to turn it all around. And that Colossus is absolutely everything. Where's the prism? Save the Colossus. Save the world. He's actually body blocking on the ground. Not mic rolling back. That Colossus is so important. He needs to be able to keep out the Zerglings. Colossus still going to work. Somehow it's only gotten one kill. It doesn't matter. He blanks forward. I was so excited for the Colossus. Well, that counterattack, Dark may have done the damage, but the counterattack was devastating. He just didn't have a lair, he didn't have Ravagers, he didn't have nearly enough units. Mainlings are not a great long-term value um, by their very nature, and that means Dark's going to have to go back to the spawning pool and try to figure out how to take this series in game number five. Of course, we're going the distance in this Korean StarCraft 2 League Finals. Of course, Dark and Hero are not going to go easily into that good night. I gotta say, especially Dark, of all players, is completely willing to play a two-hour series at any time. Dark's obligatory military service uh, is coming up. Of course, we said that most of last year, but he is 29 years old this year. I believe the limit is, is 30 at the very latest. I'm not 100%, but... Um, it So, Dark really making the most of what could be his last year of SC2. Uh, I do think that in a couple years, we probably will have a bit of a different atmosphere. Um, though I'm sure Dark will still be excited, like, of course. Uh, but we'll see. Anyways, 
the point is dark played the most professional games of anyone of anyone in the entire year the uh we're gonna get those stats on hand jimmy right oh. um maybe next series but somewhere around 3,000 games of professional starcraft 2 and here's the thing i think he may have also had the longest average game time of any of the top 10 players as well, he'll do those four minute cheeses. The amount of times on like the round of 16 of a weekly ESL cup, he's just playing a 38 minute game. Like he is more than willing. He will cheese you if he thinks he's better than you, but he will also drag the game to its greatest lengths and beat you with experience. Hero on the other hand is much more decisive as you saw there. I mean, that comes partially with just the nature of Protoss, but uh, dark is patience is unrivaled, in my opinion. <sighs> Adept. Oh, well, revolving door of adepts. Zergling speed is done. Oh, the zerglings. They want it. They'll get it. Yeah. Revenge. Another adept in the main. It's going to be oracles. So we tried that robo. Honestly, I thought the robo build was remarkably successful. But then Hero had a breakdown with 20 zerglings in his base. Because of course he did. Uh, Oracle slides in. Gonna burn through some of the drowns. Already take two drowns and then getting into the orange from the queen's knitting needles there. So, of course. As is, is customary. Oracle's joining up. Enough to uh, take out drones. Single volley just juggles one back. We go for the mineral. Oh my god, taking so much damage on one, but splits off. Finds an opportunity to get more on the other side. Dodges with a couple. First Oracle had enough for a stasis, so. Gonna continue to be annoying on the other side. It looks like even Dark versus Hero falls back to that kind of game five default. In my, in my experience, the vast majority of top pro players will do these crazy... Very, very, it's that's why it's such a standout when somebody does a crazy cheese in like game five or game seven because almost every top pro player relies on their just long term game sense. That's how it is nowadays in StarCraft 2 when almost every attack has been seen and tried before. You'll still be able to take games and sometimes series with them, but most players will rely on a bit more macro oriented styles. Uh, when push comes to shove, comes to the final match of the series. But it's, it appears that Hero's going to shove first. There's Zerglings on the way to deal with this. More Zerglings than are necessary, by the way. So he wants to crush it and then counterattack. But I think Hero realized, and a stasis catches a huge amount of the drones there. Oh, some of the adepts. The queens are marching! Oh my god. Front up. Shut up, Blue Seal. I know, last time we had a chauffeur, but this time we're walking. It's good cardio. I don't... Remember when we could fly? Shut up! Shut up! I don't... <clears throat> Sorry, I, I blacked out for a sec. Oh my god, the link's... I say a more macro-oriented build, and it is. But not by much. Dark does not have a leg. He's down ten drones. The queens! The backbone of the infrastructure are most of the way across the map. They may even kill... Every oracle is so precious here. The oracles are by far the most important. But here comes Dark. The Lings and Banes are waddling in. Stasis. Force field. The wall holds. And the Protoss will hold for now. But we got to ask the question. Well, we don't have to ask the at what cost question yet. He lost seven probes. That wasn't very much. But here comes another round. Is there enough energy? Shield battery overcharge was held on to. He's just going to try to bust through. And the Banelings taking their sweet time doing so. Will help out a lot. The Queens may be able to take out the cannon. More Banelings taken down. 
but it's just queens. And they're all creep. They cannot transfuse. The queens will be killed, isolated, and slaughtered. And the blink stalkers are dark. A half hearted attack. And now the heart of the swarm is vulnerable. It's a disaster. Hero has plus one done. But that is a lot of stalkers and not much else, which means even with a force field, the blink is quite a long cooldown when... Oh, here come the oracles to save the day. And the queens are too far out yet again. Trying to help out, trying to keep the stalkers at bay. The oracles burn through another one. There's not much energy left. The zerglings might be able to kill the stalkers, but the follow-up... He might blink just down. Oh, yep. Two stalkers escape. There's a lair has just started. There's too many stalkers here. Robo rebuilt fourth base on the way. Dark is just going to keep massing zerglings. He has to. He's he's all his chips are in the spawning pool right now. He has to rely on Hero making a mistake. Which, you know, has happened before. But Hero, I think, knows his advantage. The economy is a devastating difference. The only... The only saving grace for Dark is he doesn't know... Is that Hero doesn't know how bad it is. Okay, Hero doesn't know exactly the drone count. He knows that going that heavily into a queenling, baneling attack is clearly costly. But I don't think Hero necessarily realizes he's up 15 drones and effectively a, a entire level of tech. So, he may very well... Oh, getting an oracle would help. Knocks it out. Five? Wait, what? Oh, another oracle came in and killed five drones. Six, seven. So... Definitely not helping out, Duck. But the game isn't over. Dark has turned it around before, but this is... A tall order indeed. Nothing taller than the Colossus. Charge is done. 1-1 one, one done. 2-2 two, two on the way. Rarely do you see a significant upgrade advantage for Protoss, but it will be happening this game. A wall of gates, or at least a bulwark here. Looks like an Adept or an Observer taken out, but... Warp Prism, heading in. Dark is up to 70 drones. Which is about the limit for now until he needs to make more units. Warp Prism, taking a surprising amount of damage, but doesn't lose anything more than shields. Road speed about to complete. Zealots make it... no, nothing. For now. Five more gates on the way. Gonna go to double digits. As well as having those Colossi out dark. Oh my, the Sentry and the Probe. This is the most shoestring defense. But it should work out as long as that Probe is in the right spot. Oh my god! The reason Hero's using a Probe is because Select All Army Hotkey doesn't affect Probes. That is one of the most genius yet band-aid solutions I've ever seen to a Select All Army addiction. You just have to be careful not to have that, that, use that idle probe key. Oh my god, hero. I, I was like, huh, interesting defense until I realized why. And I'm quite convinced that the select all hero. Wow, that is certainly, with the shield battery in order to keep it against a, at least some circlings. That is a hilariously both effective and uh, amusing situation. But if it works, it works, right? We'll see if it continues to do so. Because the Zerglings can get through that probe if he doesn't overcharge, so... The rocks are going to be taken down. Now we're going to find out if Hero made a mistake in letting Dark go this long. He certainly had the advantage. He certainly had the economy. And he had the opportunity. But at the same time, he has such a backbone of defense. We got nine cannons on the way. 3-3 is in production. 
This is about as much as you could ever want besides stargates and a fleet beacon for hero. But Dark is building a hive. It's going to be maxed out armies on both sides. Dark slightly larger as he has less workers overall. But the final countdown has begun in this finals. And now the armies are ready to fight. All right. The upgrade advantage goes heavily to Hero, who's clearing out this creep. He can afford to lose a few stalkers. He's got 13 gateways. So, so many. He's building 50 man links. He's already got 20 on the field. Dark is going to try to just sweep this away, but four Colossi with fully extended thermal lances are going to make that difficult. Plus 3-3 three, three isn't quite done yet. This army is well spread out. That's going to favor the Protoss in this particular scenario. The Baitling's still rolling in. Might have been... They're not doing enough. It's not remotely close to enough. They might get one Colossus, but the Stalker's blunk forward to protect the rest. Jug pulls it back. And Hero, without even completing those final upgrades, will sweep the field. The Colossi stand tall. Dark unable to bring them low. And Hero holds his ground and strikes back. And it looks like we'll be taking this first Korean StarCraft II League Finals in 2024. A 1HP Colossus. Dark will burn. And Hero halts the darkness pushback. What an epic series. Well, GG. Hero takes it. <laughs> wow. The units lost devastating there. But that will conclude the first Korean StarCraft II League Finals of 2024. And my first new cast of 2024. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you to everyone who supported on Patreon throughout last year. And I hope you continue to enjoy into this one if you got the means and motivation. But liking and subscribing is still free. And so is checking out that second channel for even more content. If you have that many hours in the day, I envy you a bit. Thank you for watching. Hope I made your day a little bit better. Thank you to the Korean StarCraft 2 League. And I'll see you next time. Good luck. Have fun. Stay chill.